Have you seen this guy all over your TikTok? He's a comedian who's getting viral attention because he's stupid hot. Also looks like handsome Squidward. But that's besides the point. There's a new interview that he did with John Christ that has everyone talking. A private calendar of Jeffrey Epstein's obtained by the Wall Street Journal reveals links to the Obama administration, Starbucks, and FedEx. Speaking of Hollywood creeps, one of your favorite child stars and celebrity crushes shared a chilling casting couch story. Before you forget, heart or thumbs up this video right now, follow or subscribe, and turn on notifications so our content won't get hidden from you. This is the first and only entertainment news show with a conservative perspective. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Politics. Also, I'm losing my voice, so that's why I sound a little different today. Thirst Trap King on TikTok, comedian Matt Reif is looking for a wife. He's 27, been doing stand-up and acting for the last few years, but really blew up recently on TikTok because, well, of his looks. This sh just happened. <laughs> Puberty hit me so disrespectfully late. In fact, the number one thing that pops up when you search his name is Matt Reif undoing belt. <laughs> Why are you crying? He said he doesn't trust me? <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Y'all broke up? Oh my God. I am so sorry. Oh, some dudes are so insecure. He's been seen on shows like Fresh Off the Boat, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and MTV's The Challenge, to name a few. He's also a Midwest boy, born and raised in Ohio. Uh, I started a tech and then we mutually agreed it would be best for me to come back when I felt like doing the work. A few days ago, he went on John Chris podcast, Net Positive, and got pretty candid about what he's looking for. Guys aren't particularly picky either. I'm so picky. I have like the highest standards for any for anybody I, I, I get involved with. Well, there are you, you trying to get wiped up? Yeah, dude. Yeah, so he isn't kidding about having high standards. Here's something Five Orange Juicy. He dated Kate Beckinsale in 2017. He was 21 and she was 43. And this is before he was known at all. The pictures will make you sick. Not because of the age difference, but because look at that hand on the jaw kiss. Gosh dang. Little mama. Okay, yeah, so um, none of us have a chance, and also, I don't know about you, but I sure as hell wouldn't want to be living in the shadow of that. Anyways, here's a hot edit someone made of Matt Rife being fine as wine. Starbucks and FedEx connected to the latest Jeffrey Epstein news? According to new documents from the Wall Street Journal, some more names of people who may have ties with Epstein were discovered. It's a lot of people in the banking world, academia, there's an MIT professor, a prime minister, no celebrities or anything. Definitely the most interesting person to me was Joshua Cooper Ramo. He's a former Starbucks and FedEx board member. Also definitely probably said his name wrong. The current director of the CIA and member of the Biden administration, William Burns, was on this list. And an attorney for the Obama administration, Catherine Rumler, who now works for Goldman Sachs. She met with Epstein dozens of times and was actually planning on joining him on a trip to Paris in 2015 and to go to Epstein Island in 2017. She says everything was strictly business and that he was a client and that she now regrets ever knowing him. Just act casual. CIA Director William Burns claimed to the Wall Street Journal that he didn't have a relationship with Epstein, just that he was introduced as an expert in the financial services sector, that he offered general advice on his own transition to the private sector. Sure, okay, whatever you're saying. Okay. Okay, hear me out, but maybe it's just more wealthy people in business that are being hidden from the Epstein lists and logs. Your name on my list. <laughs> 
and not necessarily a bunch more celebrities, you know, that we don't already know about. Like the people who claim John and Chrissy Teigen were friends with him, as much as I can't stand them. That is just so obviously BS. I think it's probably likely a lot more Rockefeller than La La Land, but you're free to disagree with me. Speaking of child predators, former child star and actor Matthew Lawrence, who's known for Mrs. Doubtfire and Boy Meets World. What? I'm not perfect. I am. <laughs> said in a recent interview that he dealt with child predators in Hollywood firsthand. On his own podcast, Brotherly Love, he said that his unwillingness to hook up with a certain award-winning Oscar director led to missing out on a Marvel role. Asked me to take my clothes off and said he needed to take Polaroids of me, and that if I did X, Y, and Z, I would be the next Marvel character. I didn't do that, and my agency fired me because I left this, this director's room. And along, along those lines. a lot of my sto a lot of these stories, a lot of my other male friends have gone through with both men and women in this in industry. But there's a double standard, and this is where I bring Terry Crews. Terry Crews comes out and says it. People are laughing at him. It's interesting that he brought up Terry Crews because I feel like that's an old story, but maybe it's because nothing has been done about it yet. The, the deception. The betrayal, man, you deceived me. In 2017, Terry Crews shared that he had been sexually assaulted by a high-powered Hollywood exec who grabbed his genitals in front of his wife and, quote, grinned like a jerk. Terry says that guy later called him and apologized, but that he definitely never felt like he could retaliate or say anything for fear of being blacklisted. It wasn't until the Me Too movement in 2017 that he tweeted about this incident and shared it for the first time. Life updates, I have found something new to be self-conscious about. Yes, yes, monetizing my pain. Well, let's make it worth your while. It has been pointed out to me by hundreds of men on the internet last week and lovely men in person that I am basically too animated and too passionate when I talk and they don't like it. I talk too fast, I use my hands too much, my eyes get wide, I move around too much, and I guess it's off-putting to men. The other night, a guy came up to me in person and was like, you're beautiful, what's your name? Hi, baby girl. We start talking and I swear to God, he said, wow, are you always this much? I didn't know you were gonna be like that when I came over to talk to you. Do you ever have a neutral or unopinionated response? And then another guy came up and told me that he hated my outfit, but I'm currently trying to mentally block that trauma out. So we're not gonna focus on that. That is the ugliest effing skirt I've ever seen. I am curious if any of you who are married are as animated as me, or if everyone that's married has this more chill, cool girl persona, and maybe that's what my issue is. But what's frustrating is that I can't change this. I was born this way, baby. I'm a star. Please, I'm a star. Now that I think about it, most guys that I've dated end up dating a girl with little to no personality directly after me. And you know, just someone that's like very go along to get along. And a solid example of this, obviously I didn't date him, I'm just saying a solid example of this in culture would be Hailey Bieber. Compared to Selena, who's a very strong, no BS, high highs and low lows personality, I assume Hailey was kind of the palate cleanser. Does that make sense? You are who you are and be proud of that. <sighs> well, we love a self-reflective moment. I'm gonna try to do the outro now as one of the girls that guys seem to be drawn to allegedly. Oh my God, stop. This is so embarrassing. It's pop culture without the propaganda. I'm Alex Clark and this is Politics. Okay, seriously, don't post that.